Oklahoma Sooners taking the field, the number two team in the country on a cold, damp night in Norman, Oklahoma. The 81st meeting between the Sooners and Nebraska Cornhuskers. You take a look at first year head coach Bill Callahan. Up and down ride for Bill Callahan's ball club in his first year, five and four, three and three against the Big 12. There is Bob Stoops, 41 and eight against the Big 12 and his sixth season, 64 and 11 overall, 35 and one at home and 17 and three against the Big 12 North. The last eight meetings between these two teams, at least one team in the top five and we are underway. And Mark Bradley brings it ahead and Bradley gets out to the 15 yard line, great coverage by Nebraska to get this thing started. Take a look at our Kia Sarah starting lineups. The senior out of Tuttle, Oklahoma. Jason White brings his team out onto the field. And there you see the numbers on the young man. 16 touchdown passes and just one interception in his last four games. The big fellows up front. Keep an eye on Jamal Brown on that right side, making his 38th career start. Backs and receivers, Jones and Peterson, Clayton Bradley, and James Moses is the tight end. Jason White from the gun on first down and 10. Hands it up the middle, and it's Kiwan Jones on the first play of the game, and Jones spins ahead to the 19-yard line as we take a look at our Kia Sarah starting lineups on the defensive side for the guys from Nebraska. Adam Carricker getting the start at the left defensive end. Lakeven Smith, Titus Adams, and Bernard Thomas. Those defensive ends will get after the quarterback. Those gentlemen right there, one, two, and three, as far as the tackle category is concerned with Nebraska. And these guys in the backfield, 95 career starts between the four of them. Throw in on second down and complete. Mark Clayton makes the catch, and Clayton has the first down out to the 28-yard line. Kevin, the most impressive thing about OU this year is their balance offensively. They have changed their scheme from a couple years ago where they threw the ball all over the place to where they can run the ball, and Jason White can sort of deliver throwing the ball. His number one target, Mark Clayton, great after the catch. Does a lot, gets a lot of extra yardage there, and this offense has got a lot of balance now. You take an Adrian Peterson, put him into that offense, and you have the ability of Jason White and these receivers. This is a very powerful Oklahoma offense. Here's Kiwan Jones trying it up the middle again, gets away from one man and gets it out across the 30-yard line, out to the 32. You know, I talk about the offense and being powerful. I think the thing really starts up front. Their offensive line has been tremendous this year. Kiwan Jones, Adrian Peterson, and Jason White have all had a veteran offensive line in front of them and given them an opportunity to produce back there. It all starts up front. Vince Carter, the center, anchors that group, and Jamal Brown, you mentioned earlier, Kevin, one of the best in the business, and he's had a great season so far for the Sooners. Three wide receivers set for Oklahoma on second down and seven. Again, here's Keywon Jones on the delay, and Jones across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Daniel Bullock's the strong safety, had to come up and make the tackle for Nebraska. Well, when you want to run the football and be a power team, that's what OU does here. They bring their right tackle. Watch him pull across and get the kick out block. That's Jamal Brown. When you got big men that can run like this, 6'6", 315 pounder, and Keywon Jones smart enough to get in behind those blockers. Good things are going to happen for your football team, and Oklahoma wants to come out and start fast and put points on the board early. They want to make a statement in this game against Nebraska. Juwan Jones, young man that rushed for over 925 yards a year ago. Getting the start here tonight, and Jones right up the middle, and he takes it near the 40. It's enough for a first down on a third down and a yard. Well, last week in a very physical ball game against Texas A&M, Oklahoma's running back, Adrian Peterson, we saw him come to the sidelines, take his shoulder pads off, and kind of tendered him a little bit there. He did go back into the football game to get over 100 yards on one run in that game, but they've decided to start Kiwan Jones, the senior running back here, and really well, they've got two kind of a, a one-two punch of these two because they've done a great job all year long. Kiwan has really understood his role, allowing Peterson to flourish as a special freshman. First down and 10 from the 39-yard line. Straight drop out of the gun. Going up top and big, and it's caught by Peoples. Inside Nebraska territory down to the 37-yard line. 
Well, they make it look just so easy right now. This quarterback, Jason White, reads the defense very well at zone coverage, and he's just going to read the void of the defense and wait for the receiver to come around. You see Barrett Rude, number 38. He cannot get back in coverage deep enough to take Peoples out of the middle, and the free safety has to come across from his half of the field to make the tackle. Nice throw, nice catch. Everything working right now for Jason White throwing the football. Bullock's made the stop, but not after a gain of 17 yards. They move the sticks first to 10 from the 37. Delay again. Penalty marker goes down, as does Kiwan Jones after he gets inside the 35 yard line to the 34, but check the marker. Yeah, the umpire's throwing that in. They're going to get a hold against the Sooners here. Hey, your referee, Tom Allers, today. That's Davin Joseph. Still first down. Yeah, Joseph was a great high school wrestler and wrestled a little too much here. Yeah, got his left arm up there. You see that? And when you get him turning, you take him down. That's the old pancake or the, the old wrestling move they'll talk about and going to get you a flag every time. So the Sooners get pushed back 10 yards here. A first down and 20. Once again, White from the gun. Here comes the pressure, gets it out, and a lot of room to run. Kiwan Jones back to the 35-yard line, and he gets just inside where the original line of scrimmage was. It's a 12-yard game, but if he had broken this one outside, it looked like he had a ton of room to run. Well, offensive coordinator Chuck Long calling the screen play here to Kiwan Jones. Watch the lineman release, and Kiwan get in right behind him. Nice touch pass by Jason White. This is execution here outnumbering the Nebraska defense on the weak side of the field and getting out there making a nice play. I'll tell you, Chuck Long has really turned into one of the best coordinators in college football and doing a good job with this offense. First second down and nine. Oklahoma goes from the I formation and they hand it to Jones. And Jones trying that right side to be short of the first down as he gets down to the 31 yard line. Still, it's going to bring up a third down and about four yards to go as Josh Bullocks, the free safety, comes up and makes that stop. Well, when you got a fullback like number 38 here, J.D. Runnels, for this football team, he's a no-nonsense kind of a guy. And when he plays fullback, he wants to go out there and block every single time. He knows his role, and he's the heart and soul of this football team running the ball out of the backfield. And they'll let him catch the ball as well. He's a big part of the, the offense here for Oklahoma. And, I know Bob Stoops cannot say enough about his that young man and his character and had a nice block there on that last play. Third down, long three. Line to make is just inside the 27-yard line. And to Jones up the middle, he's not even going to get close. And a little decision time now. Going to be third and short. Excuse me, come up fourth and short here for Bob Stoops and his football team. And the fans are all saying, go, go, go. You're in a very friendly environment here. And, Got a receiver coming on the field, so Jason White's going to keep the offense out there. It looks like they're going to go for it here. Character and Barrett Rood stepping up and stepping into the hole. It was kind of blocked on the left side. Vince Carter, the center, got a little bit too much upfield and came around. Defensive tackle made the tackle. Fourth down and three. Looking for Wilson. He has the first down and a penalty marker comes down at the end of the play. May have been a face mask. Lornell McPherson made the stop. Well, graduated some receivers a year ago from this football team. Mark Clayton was a returner. Travis Wilson has stepped in along with Mark Bradley to really make a fine receiving core here for Jason White to throw the football. And, and you've got a young man who throws balls accurately as Jason White does here. Easy for throw and catch here for the first down. You see Wilson, the ball going to be up a little high, but he pulls it in nicely. And and you get a face mask added on to the end of that play. So the drive continues and a fourth down conversion for Oklahoma. You now this is the first time for Bill Callahan to come to this stadium here in Norman, Oklahoma. Talk to him this week about his trips around this conference and talk about a lot of firsts for his football team and a lot of firsts, a lot of changes for that program more importantly. The first down and 10, seven step drop, looking for the corner of the end zone and just out of the reach of Travis Wilson. As Lornell McPherson had the coverage step for step. Yeah, it's man to man coverage. McPherson right with Travis Wilson, trying to throw the ball with touch over. Jason White, a little bit too much air under the ball this time. Good protection up front. Hey, this, this offensive line has only allowed seven sacks this year on their quarterback. And 
A couple of the players haven't even allowed a hit on the quarterback, but the ball is a little bit too much air, as I said, and sails out of the end zone. The second down at 10. Again, the three wide receivers set. Houston and company will be busy tonight. Keewon Jones up the middle. Keewon knocked down immediately after a gain of maybe a yard. I believe it was Stuart Bradley who got up there and Jay Moore, the defensive end. Now, this Nebraska defense, Kevin, they have played good in at times this year. They've done a great job against the run in spurts. They need to kind of rally here, got a chance to slow this football team down here. They, I think if they, on this opening drive, if they force Oklahoma to, to attempt a field goal here, that would be a plus for this defense to come into Norman, into this hostile environment, kind of get a, get a feel for the flow of the game and come away with just a, having an attempt a field goal would be a big plus for that Nebraska defense. Third down and eight. White, plenty of time to throw, does throw and incomplete. Off the hand of Travis Wilson, would have been well short of the first down as Wilson couldn't hold on. So now it is field goal time for the Oklahoma Sooners. Yeah, Josh Bullock's good coverage that time. Jason White had nowhere to throw the football. Going to be a fourth down here, and Bob Stoops doesn't hesitate. Going to bring on his field goal kicker to try to put one through the post. And this has not been automatic for the Sooners this year. Have had some difficulty getting the ball through there. And Trey DiCarlo, one of the more steady kickers in the league, really has not had a great season. He's missed four out of his last five. This is a 32-yard attempt. Finalist for the Grozo Award in 2003. But it's been a different story this year, but not on this kick. So Trey DiCarlo gets the Sooners on top on senior day in Norman. Opening drive of the game. Sooners get a field goal. Well, a cold, rainy night in Norman, Oklahoma with Gary Reasons and John Radigan. I'm Kevin Eschenfelder. It's that man right there, Trey DiCarlo, kicks it through from 32 yards out. The Sooners score first on their opening possession, and they lead it 3-0. Brandon Jackson and Tierre Green back deep for Nebraska. This is Jackson. And Jackson out to the 20-yard line, and no more. I think he ran right into J.D. Runnels, and Runnels would have no part of it. Russell Dennison is down on the stop for Oklahoma. Take a look at the Nebraska lineup brought to you by Kia Sarah, the man that the coaching staff says it put more pressure on than anyone else in this program. Joe Daly, he calls the six. They are big and strong up front. Eduare is the man on the right side. He's the man who's been converted over from the defensive side of the football. Flewellen, Ross, Prewald, Nunn, and Kaiser, your backs and receivers. Dusty Kaiser, the tight end. Filling in admirably. First down, they hand it off. Corey Ross, Ross, making people miss and gets it out to the 24-yard line where Brodney Poole finally makes the stop. But what a run for Corey Ross. Take a look at the defense now for Oklahoma. Guys up front, Jonathan Jackson, Pendleton, Lynn Magruder, and Dan Cody, the All-American candidate. The guys in the middle, Lance Mitchell, who's playing great right now. Strong side is Ingram and Rufus Alexander on the corners. The man who took the... Red shirt off last week. Marcus Walker on that corner. Nichols and Poole are your safeties. Hand it off this time, though, and nothing doing. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's the end of the road for Corey Ross. It's, see, big Lynn Magruder who got in there first. Magruder making the stop, and it's going to be a third down coming up for Nebraska. Kevin, if you've been in a bunker for the last few months and don't really know what's going on with the Nebraska program, New offensive coach there, Bill Callahan, head coach, has brought a new system to the Cornhuskers, and it's the West Coast offense. Hey, the days of running downhill from that eye back position are gone for Nebraska. They're trying to get comfortable with this West Coast system. They're a pretty balanced football team, same production, running and throwing the ball. And as you said earlier, it's all in the hands of Joe Daly, the quarterback, and they've got to get production from that, per, from that position to be successful offensively. Third down, you see Antonio Perkins has checked into the game for Oklahoma. That is a welcome sight for Sooner fans as he has been out with an E injury ever since the Texas game. They said he'd be a game time decision as to whether or not he'd be good to go on that left side. And there he is, the All-American return man, Antonio Perkins, a senior out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, he got hurt in the Texas game late in that ball game. Glad to have him back in the lineup. He'll be playing on the right side. And Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Number 75 remains third down. And I think they're still going to play with uh, Marcus Walker, the true freshman who they took the red shirt off just last week to get into the football game. So 
Back with Antonio Perkins at the cornerback positions. They feel like they've got their best two athletes out there for them. Well, they go from a tough down and distance to a tougher down and distance. Third down and 11. Got to get it out to the 30-yard line for first. Hand it off on the counter. Corey Ross out to the 24-yard line with some second effort. But well short of the first down as Dan Cody is there to knock him off his pins. And so three and out for Nebraska on their opening possession of the night. Well, that's all, all really okay. Three downs and out. You got your field for your offense to go out there. Didn't have any mistakes. Didn't throw the ball into a, a very, very explosive and fast defense. Didn't make anything bad happen. It's okay to go three downs and punt. Now you got to go down the field and play some defense once again. Sam Cook had three punts last week against Iowa State of 50 plus and there you see Mark Clayton back deep. The rolls dead at the 31 yard line. So Oklahoma leading three nothing. They get the football back for the second time tonight with 555 to go in North. So Oklahoma scores on its first possession. Football back after holding Nebraska to a three and out. 5.55 to go in the first quarter here on a rainy and cold night in Norman, Oklahoma. Temperatures are going to dip down into the 30s tonight. It's not been a heavy rain, but a pretty steady light rain that's been falling all afternoon. Adrian Peterson all day has checked into the game. Let the senior take the first series on senior night. Beg your pardon, Kiwan Jones, a junior, but now they go back to the freshman in Adrian Peterson. And here is Adrian Peterson, and Peterson out to the 46-yard line. Talking right now, let's go to the studio as a Dr. Pepper game break. Mike Goldberg. Kevin, want to update you from College Station. Football game went to overtime. Number 22, Texas A&M scored on their first possession. Sonny Cumby and the Red Raiders need to answer, but they do not do so. And the Yankees win it in the extra session. Final score, 32 to 25. That's a big win for Texas A&M. As you take a look at the updated South standings, Texas, who gets by today in a squeaker at Kansas as well, in it's 6-1. And, and Texas A&M now 5-2. There's Oklahoma, the team they're chasing, and that's a big play. It came from the safety spot, and right from the middle, it was Ira Cooper who broke through, and Cooper, the senior from Omaha, Nebraska, was there to make the stop. A loss of four. Well, Ira's an extra linebacker there for him. They're bringing enough players up the line of scrimmage to take care of the run. With Adrian Peterson in the backfield, they feel like, hey, we got to challenge these guys, put eight and nine guys around the line of scrimmage and try to make some plays run through, which is what Ira Cooper did there. Made a nice play, brings up a third and long situation. Third down and 10 from the 42. Plenty of time to throw. Good coverage. Looks almost picked up. It's caught by Will Peoples, but Peoples knocked down immediately. Again, Lornell McPherson, who's been busy all night long, albeit we're just nine minutes into this game, 11 minutes into this game, but Lornell McPherson was there to make a big time play against Peoples. Well, five receivers out in the pattern, Kevin, and five guys all covered up very well by Nebraska's defense. The coverage, you saw McPherson run across the field all the way. Making a short gain there for Oklahoma, allowing just a short gain for Oklahoma, brings up a fourth down. That's a situation I talked about. Go ahead and punt the ball on fourth down. It's not a bad situation. Then you have to rely on your defense to make plays sometimes, and the Blackshirt defense does that very well. Blake Ferguson to punt it away, gets a good high hanger, and a fair catch taken at the 12-yard line. So Nebraska will get it back for the second time on senior night in Norman, Oklahoma. College football Saturday presented by Kiyosara and Oklahoma leads it 3-0. Nebraska with the football for the second time tonight. Tonight's Best Buy trivia question, who holds the Oklahoma record for touchdown passes in a game against the Nebraska Cornhuskers? Think about it. The answer to come in just a little while. First down and 10. Nebraska Cornhuskers with the football, trailing it 3-0. Second possession of the night. 
They got movement on the right side. That's Dusty Kaiser, the tight end. And, you know, you talk about the tight end for Nebraska. They're having to fill in for Matt Herrian, who broke his leg against Missouri. And you're talking about an all-conference type of performer. Full start, number 77 of the offense, five yards, still first down. Well, and you see the quarterback, Joe Daly, come to the line of scrimmage and trying to make adjustments here. That's not easy to do in this stadium. These fans can get a little bit loud, and I don't think that uh, the young man, Dusty Kaiser, actually heard the heard the audible and heard the snap, just took off right away. So these fans can get into, get into this football game pretty heavily here down this end zone. They back it up to the eight-yard line. Daly straight drop to throw, does, it's complete to Fluellen. What a big play that is as he gets it out to the 19-yard line, a gain of 11 yards on a first down and 15. Well, the offensive line gave Daly enough time to throw the football, really no pressure on that quarterback, and when you have a chance to, excuse me, throw the football down the field just like they did there, nice job of throwing it inside the coverage between the two safeties and uh, a little breathing room here for that Nebraska offense. Well, the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. So second down and three. Daly with the audible again. Cody coming off the edge, throws it complete to Corey Ross, and Ross has the first down. He gets it out to the 33-yard line before Brodney Poole can make the stop. And how about Joe Daly at the line of scrimmage checking off and calling the right audible? And throwing a nice touch pass out to Corey Ross, who's really been a big plus for this offense. Had been bothered a little bit by a turf toe, but when he plays on game day, it feels like that he can play and go and right runs the defense here to the outside, as you see. Uh, Defense shaping up there, making a nice play on the outside. Rodney Poole, the leading tackler on that center defense. Daly, the sophomore from Jersey City, New Jersey. On first down and 10. Trying to hand it to Brandon Jackson, and Jackson with good yardage as he takes it for a gain of five yards. Time now for a Dr. Pepper Green break. Mike Goldberg. Kevin Gary, and then there were five. Five unbeatens in Division I college football. Previously unbeaten, Wisconsin overwhelmed by Michigan State. There's DeAndre Cobb with a 55-yard touchdown. Wisconsin still has never been 10-0 in their 115-year history. And another unbeaten has been delayed. A power outage in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the youths try to conclude what has been a great year. It seems like Michigan State just plays better against the better opponents. It took Michigan to overtime. And take care of Wisconsin today. Roy Ross on the carry, and it's going to bring up a third down. So now, with Wisconsin going down, the BCS going into play. USC, Oklahoma, Auburn, Cal, and Wisconsin at number five. Wisconsin obviously going to move out of that picture. What's that do to everyone else? It's going to shuffle it up quite a bit. A lot of work to do still here because Oklahoma, they need to have a convincing win. Auburn winning that ball game big today against Georgia. That was a plus for them. Here's Ross tripped in the, in the backfield, and Corey Ross is going to be very near a first down, but I think he's short. It was third down and three, and he needed get it out to the 37-yard line. I think he's about a half yard short. Yeah, Bill Callahan, no decision here. Are going to run that punt team on there, try to win the field position battle, punt the ball down the field. Now, remember last week, a couple of special teams plays against the Oklahoma Sooners. Dennis Franchoni from Texas A&M, hey, called two fakes and executed both of them. Bob Stoops is actually the guy who coordinates the special team for the Sooners. Hey, he did not like that, and they spent extra time this week on special teams coverage. They can let that happen again. As Sam Cook boots this one away to Mark Clayton. Clayton calls for the fair catch. And a penalty marker comes in, and we're going to have an interference. As you see, Chandley came through there. And you cannot interfere with the man catching the football. Andrew Shanley, the sophomore from St. Edward, Nebraska, making the mistake. And if you're Bill Callahan, knowing that it's difficult in this stadium to play, you get the three phases, offense, defense. You'd like to think that you can have an edge in the special teams game. I talked about the, the miscues that Oklahoma's had over the past three weeks. Fair catch interference on the kicking team. Number eight, 15 yards from the end of the kick. First down. 
Well, this is something that you can't do. Run into the, re the returner as he's there. I, actually, there's actually no touch there. Shanley's got a, about a yard real, real close to him, but uh, in the referee's judgment, he decided that uh, that was war worthy of a penalty. Under a half minute to go in the first quarter. That'll bring it out instead of being inside the 15 yard line. That'll bring it out to the 30. So first down and 10 for Oklahoma. White throws this one a little bit behind the intended receiver, Jawan Rankins. I think Jason White thought Jawan Rankins was going to actually slow down and turn back inside for that ball underthrown, obviously. And that's not an error that Jason White usually makes. A little miscommunication there with Rankins. Oklahoma 9-0 conference wins, maybe coming off their toughest stretch of the season. Conference wins over Tech, Texas, at Kansas State, at home against KU. Then they went to Oklahoma State and Texas A&M. Bob Stoops' team survived and sunk. Second down and 10. And the key on Jones. Jones hitting the backfield that breaks outside. Gets it ahead for a gain of three or four yards. We're trying to win the corner here and get around the edge with uh, Kiwan Jones and his speed, but Fabian Washington, the corner comes off and makes a nice tackle on the outside. And his defense here, I talked about Nebraska's defense being spotty, playing well at times, but so far in this ball game, kind of slowing this offense down for Oklahoma. Well, Nebraska said they wanted to get the job done in the red zone and hold Oklahoma to field goals. They've done exactly that in the first 15 minutes of football into the first quarter. Oklahoma leads 3 0. Our college football Saturday triple header continues after this game when Arizona takes on top ranked USC and Heisman hopeful Matt Leinert. It all begins right after our game only on FSN. Check local listings for games and start times in your area. But there's going to be a little brotherly love going on in that contest. Bob Stoops probably talked a lot to his brother Mike Stoops at Arizona, hoping that they could upset those, uh, those Trojans. Texas and KU kind of got the ball rolling on the right foot earlier today. Can't ask for much more out of a football game than that. Guess you could ask for a lot more if you're a Kansas fan, but Texas scoring almost on the last play of the game to win that one. This one is complete. On a third down, and it's enough for the first is Mark Bradley. A little slant pattern as he picks up the first down. Mark Bradley has really been impressive for these Sooners coming on the scene this year. Really hadn't done a lot in his previous years, but this young man just over his last three games has six touchdowns to his credit and doing a nice job here on the quick slant for uh, for the Sooners getting a first down. Bradley's father, Danny, was a quarterback here at Oklahoma back from 81 to 83. Wide receiver's son getting the job done. Senior from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. On first and 10, in the flat. Caught by J.D. Runnels, and uh, J.D. Runnels just went up and took it away from Josh Bullocks. Just a matter of who's stronger, and it was J.D. Runnels. Well, I talked about J.D. Runnels as a blocker, but he's actually a very good receiver coming out of the backfield here. And look at his hands. The young man goes up for it. Pulls the ball down. He's got a guy climbing over his back, but J.D. pulls it down and makes a nice grab there. Not a big gain, three or four yards, but uh, that's a good positive play here from your fullback. Ninth catch of the season. Call it a gain of five. Though. Second down and five is coming up. Kiwan <laughs> Jones right up the middle, and Kiwan Jones is be short of the first down, so a third down coming up as we go down to John Radigan. JR? All right, Kevin, thanks very much. You might want to keep an eye on Will Linebacker Chad Sievers, number 54 for Nebraska. He'll have that mix of being extremely tired and that feeling of euphoria that a new papa has. Yes, Chad Sievers and his wife Jesse had a baby on Wednesday. Jesse, a former Nebraska women's basketball player, JC Gene Sievers was born Wednesday. Chad just missed one day of practice. Missed Wednesday, he was back on the field Thursday, but I doubt he's getting a whole lot of sleep yet, guys. Uh, you can rest assured he's not getting much of that. Thanks a lot, John. On third down, this one is going to complete. Should be very close to a first down. I think he got there. J.D. Runnels once again out of the backfield with a quick little pass from uh, Jason White. Nice throw and catch. He just turns it up the field enough to get that first down. Doesn't have to be a tough, long pass. And see the play action here. Fake down to rank. Excuse me, to Kiwan Jones in, inside. But uh, the big fullback pops out to the outside. And second catch. One to his right. Now to his left. And a first down. It was third and three. And he got four. 
Move the sticks again from the 44 yard line, first down and 10. Keyon Jones, a single setback. Play action. Good protection again. Throws this one to Mark Clayton, complete. Bullock's knocked him down immediately, but not before another big gain. A first down for Oklahoma, a gain of 20 yards. Well, when you've got a running game with Adrian Peterson and Kiwan Jones in the backfield, that play action fake that comes forward right here, you have to honor. Watch these linebackers so there's no help coming across the field. And take a look here, number nine, Clayton gets in front of the safety who's got coverage on him. That's Washington, can't keep up with him. Excuse me, that's Bullock's, I mean, number 14. And Mark Clayton's been the go to guy all year. And really has exceptional talent getting separation from defensive backs. From the 25 yard line, quick toss complete to Travis Wilson. And Wilson couldn't beat McPherson. McPherson just grabbed on and held on for dear life, spun him out of bounds. Well, when you've got a six year quarterback, you can do these kinds of things at the line of scrimmage. This is just one thing that the quarterback does with his uncovered wide receiver. You see coverage back there is eight, nine yards off. This is something they do. They throw it and catch it and get what they can. It's uh, audible at the line of scrimmage just between those two and Jason White. Smart enough to read it right there. Look at the numbers on Jason White. 10 of 13 already. 100 yards on the evening. That's a second down and four. Jones, nothing doing. Big guys up front were there from the very beginning. It was Lakeven Smith, the junior from Macon, Georgia, a guy that his coaching staff absolutely loves the way he's playing right now. He and Brandon Teamer were there to make the stop. Lakeven's really done a great job with this Nebraska defense. He, hey, he's kind of like a Jason White. He's recovered from two ACL surgeries. The young man come in and done a great job, and he's a big body up there. And when he's on his game, he can be a force in that defensive line. Last time Oklahoma lost a game to a Big 12 North opponent was 2001. That was 20 to 10 at the time. It was Nebraska and Oklahoma one and two in the nation. Jason White looking, looking, throwing and incomplete. And a penalty marker comes in. Mark Bradley was held. Uh, Kellen Hiskin came in a little, little soon there. Popped him before the ball got there. And Jason White trying to throw the ball outside, and Houston just makes a little contact. They're going to be interference against the defense. That's interference by the defense. 29, automatic first down at the spot of the foul. Spot of the foul, the 15-yard line. Jason White stepping up here, smart quarterback in the pocket, and a little contact there before the ball gets there, and that's what the penalty is. Houston not really complaining about it. He realized it happened. He tried to sell it. First and 10 from the 15, hand it to Adrian Peterson. And Peterson well, went ahead for a couple, and he was absolutely popped after a gain of two yards. Well, I don't think Adrian Peterson shies away from contact, that's for sure, uh, Kevin. This is one, one back that I've watched this year really do some special things, but one thing he does not do is shy away from bringing, a, bringing that load, 210, 215 pounds, and he is solid. Talking to all the coaches that are around him, they say, hey, he is a special athlete, and he really works at it, too. He's been here, was here all summer, was in the off-season program, and Bob Stoops says, hey, that's part of his character, and he works all day as long as he, and he plays all day as well. Uh, Josh Bullocks was there to hit the freshman and greet him nastily. Second down and eight. Throwing into the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Willie Roberts. Oh! What a route, what a throw here by Jason White. This is an out and up to your big tight end. Willie Roberts works around the corner, gets to the back of the end zone, and Jason White threads it in there perfectly, and then the big tight end goes up at 6-7 for a nice tall catch here in the back of the end zone. And see the touch pass, the pump, Turns up and watch his catch. Good job by Willie Roberts. Coverage was good, but the throw and the catch were just excellent. First touchdown catch for Willie Roberts. Point after is no good. 
Will that play a factor down the line? We shall see. Jason White, six of seven, 59 yards on the drive. And the Sooners lead it nine to nothing. Willie Roberts' first career catch goes for a touchdown. Well, the big fellow's going to line up here in a slot, motion back, and then he comes up and out, runs an up and out to the outside here. Jason White threads it nicely, and Willie Roberts, when you're 6'7", 245 pounds, you're a nice target. Does a good job here with the coverage of the linebacker, and the route, I think, just kind of gets, gets away from that linebacker who's in coverage, and that's uh, Stuart Bradley. Good throw and a great catch that time by Willie Roberts. A Dodge scoring drive, 11 plays, 70 yards to 431 is Jason White, 72nd career touchdown pass. This one will come out to the 20 yard line of the touchback. So early on here in the second quarter, now some adjustments need to be made on that sideline as Joe Daly brings his team back out onto the field from the 20 yard line. Well, it's Nebraska offense, Kevin. We talked about it being the new West Coast style of offense that Bill Callahan runs. And, hey, fans have to be a little bit patient with it because really what they have to have is they've got to have the talent. They've got to have the players in the positions that Bill Callahan needs to make this offense execute. Remember, for years and years and years, they recruited and got players in Nebraska to run that downhill style of power football, option football, and a little bit different here with this whole scheme. Corey Ross hit by Lance Mitchell after a gain of a couple. The first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. That was another thing, too, is that when Bill Callahan talked about, talked with us this week, he said, you know, this wasn't about changing things dramatically. We still wanted these offensive linemen to come in. We wanted to be able to run the football to be successful. And they really have. They've been very, very balanced. 185 yards a game rushing, rushing 186 yards a game passing. So they're getting it done. But I'm not sure that Bill Callahan is really liking getting it done with 50-50. He liked more 60-40 throwing the football. Corey Ross getting it done on this play. He's out near a first. Depend on the spot. Needed to get to the 30-yard line. Clint Ingram making the stop. Junior from Hallsville, Texas. Corey Ross has been a real plus here for this offense. You know, he's kind of adapted to it, and he's got those quick feet, little jitterbug, good moves in the open field, and he's one of those backs that you know, Nebraska fans like to watch run in the open field. He gets it done, and a good job here for this Husker offense. Pretty close to 1,000 yards on the season right now. This time handed to Brandon Jackson on third down and about a foot. And the side judge coming in looks like he got the first down. Well, they pulled the ball out. I thought it was a fumble. Going to depend on who they give it to here. Looked like the Sooners, when they had him in the pile, they're going to pull that football out. But the, the forward progress is what they're marking here for Jackson. Gang tackle that time by the Sooner defense. And they've been coached well to get there in those piles and try to pull that ball out. Take a look here as the ball runs off the left side of the defense, and the ball definitely does come out, and he's trying to get that extra yard, and you see Lance Mitchell, number 10, the middle linebacker, just pull that football out, and wow. that, ball, that ball might have been out, and probably called a little bit, and whistle might have blown a little bit early. So Daly on first down at 10, throws this one. It's complete tough catch by Fluell, and as he gets it out for a gain of five, he paid the price after he caught it as well. Rodney Poole, the junior from Houston, making the stop. Right on the second catch of the night. Only his eighth catch of the season, and he has gotten a lot more playing time over the last couple of weeks. Well, that's something that this offense does with the West Coast style. Quick passes, quick decisions by the quarterback. You talk about all the pressure being on the quarterback, Joe Daly, and that certainly is the case. He's got to read the where the progression is and got to make decisions very quickly and throw the ball to the right, right area. Hey, if they're executing, they can complete passes and give yardage. Daly again. This one picked up. Garon Allen and Allen comes up with the first turnover of the night and a huge play for Oklahoma. One of the things the West Coast style of offense does, Kevin, is they like to flood the field with three receivers, and that's exactly what Nebraska does here. They're going to have three receivers to the top side of the field, and you'll take a look at it. You're going to have a back come out here and the three down here. Quarterback doesn't see Gay Ron Allen, the middle linebacker, who slides over. He just gets into zone coverage and undercuts that throw. He had a double slant pattern in front. And Gay Ron Allen, nice job of anticipating and good job in getting back in zone coverage for the Sooners. Allen with his first interception. 
Senior making the big play on senior night. Handed off to Bradley. Bradley's going to throw it. Wide open man. Caught at the one by Clayton. Clayton was wide open. The ball had so much air underneath it that the defensive backs were able to adjust, but still, Clayton goes up and gets it. Well, sometimes on sudden change, coaches want to do something special. They're going to make a play. You're going to have your receiver come around, and he's going to throw the football. Mark Bradley, hey, he's going to zip this in. Nobody's going with Clayton, who runs up the field very easily. Ball's thrown at a great catch and adjustment by Clayton. Fabian Washington just too late there to break the pass up. From the one, Keywon Jones, touchdown, Oklahoma. So the Sooners get the pick and a couple of plays later take it in for six more. Turnovers are key in big ball games. When you come to the University of Oklahoma, you cannot make mistakes and give Jason White and company a chance to operate. Good job up front for the score, but the big play, Gayron Allen with the interception, and then Mark Bradley throwing a nice little powder puff ball down to, to Clayton to set up that score. So to Kylo for the point after, and this one is good. So 8.03 to go in the first half. Mark Bradley getting it done with his arm. And the Sooners lead it by a score of 16 to nothing. Yeah, Mark Bradley, two, two passes in his career, both for touchdowns and both to Mark Clayton. So every time they run that play, it's been successful for these Sooners. Well, it wasn't a touchdown pass that time, but it was close down to the one yard line and set up the touchdown. You know what I mean? Getting close Gosh, enough to get it done. Absolutely. Just about like a touchdown. Just took him one more try to get there. Take a look at that Dodge scoring drive. Obviously, the key play was that pass from Mark Bradley to Mark Clayton. Set up the touchdown. It's what about the linebacker play? Gay Ron Allen doing a good job Absolutely. getting out well, of coverage and uh, took advantage of a of an interception by Allen. And I gotta say good take about linebackers, Kev, you know. Well, I have you in the booth for that. <laughs> I'll take care of that, that's for sure. The Sooners leading at 16 nothing. Needless to say, big drive here for Nebraska. Here's Corey Ross. Ross at the line of scrimmage and not a whole lot there. And who's there again? Why, that would be Gayron Allen. Gayron Allen doing a good job on the weak side. Slow play. That's what you do on the back side. Wait for that cut back and take it away from Corey Ross. These linebackers here from Oklahoma, they just kind of turn them through. They got a lot of great players. And good to see Lance Mitchell back on the field for this football team at the middle linebacker spot. And Bob Stoops has been very fortunate with his recruiting to have great athletes at that linebacker spot. They put speed on the field at Oklahoma. And that's a big reason for the defense's success. Again, Corey Ross this time has room to run. And Corey Ross out to the 45-yard line. That time maybe taking advantage of the aggressiveness of the defense, a 22-yard gain. Well, that hole opened up very nicely on the right side here. Watch the blocking up front. The defensive tackles get split there, and the linebacker, Lance Mitchell, takes it inside, and the outside shoulder allowed him to Allowed him to square up on that fullback with that block, but good job by Crewald knocking him out of the way and good run by Corey Ross. And people's lucky he didn't get a face mask there at the end of the play. This time Ross just lowers his head and goes for a gain of maybe a yard. Gayron Allen is there once again. You, know, you see some flashes of old here. Big power football here by this Nebraska offense. You bring your fullback downhill and let him lead block inside. Couple of plays there for Nebraska. Getting the first down and now brings up a second and long. 6.40 to go, first half. Second down and nine. Taylor with the pump fake, this time hands it off, but it really didn't fool anybody, particularly not Clint Ingram. Corey Ross gets a couple, but it's going to be a third down coming up. Carl Pendleton also redshirt freshman. 6'6", 277. You see Corey Ross going off. 
right arm just kind of hanging there. Probably one of those stingers that you have as a player. And probably back in this football game pretty quick. Hopefully so for the Nebraska football team. So Ross leaves, they go empty. Away from the gun. Throws it, but it's going to be short of the first down. It's complete. But again, short of the first down on third. Yeah, I'm not sure he would even had a chance to get the first down should he been able to catch it and turn up the field. And Bailey throwing the ball, choosing to throw the ball to the outside and the flat. But that's all the defense is going to give him that time. It brings up a fourth down and I guess a couple to go. And David Horn made that catch where Horn got to the football. He just didn't have a chance. There's Mark Clayton back deep. He stands at his 10 yard line. Catch taken by Clayton, and they'll take it at the 17-yard line. So time out on the field, 5.02 to go in the first half. Oklahoma leads it, gets the ball. Coming up on the Seattle's Halftime Report, I'll be joined by the Hall of Famers, Kellen Winslow and Billy Ray Smith. We go around the Big 12, including a near shocker at Lawrence and an overtime thriller in College Station. Plus, to the Plains for Auburn and Georgia. That's all coming up. Back to Norman, Kevin, Gary, John, guys. All right, Mike, thank you very much. And, yes, yeah, great games today. One that you thought would be a great game. Didn't turn out that way with Auburn, but... Oklahoma leading this one 16 to nothing. Texas A&M in a thriller with Texas Tech. Same thing with KU in Texas. Here, Oklahoma trying to leave little doubt as they lead it 16 to nothing. This one complete to Mark Clayton. Clayton trying to make things happen. And he's very good at doing it. It's after the 21 yard line, but Pendleton Parker comes in. Daniel Bullock makes the tackle. He was brought down by yeah, the flag came at the end of the play. May have been against the defense or came in from the sideline. Possibly well. a holding penalty out there. Don't really know which one they're calling here. But, you know, they have those wide receivers out there on that quick little screen, and they're blocking downfield. And they've got to hold that for quite a long time, but that ball gets out holding there. Holding by the offense, number four, 10 yards from the spot of the fall. It was Travis Wilson, but I thought what was interesting talking with, with the coaching staff from Nebraska this week, they said, you know, you look at this Oklahoma wide receiver core, you, you see the big numbers. What they do better than anything else is block downfield. They are as good as anybody in the country at blocking downfield. Well, and really the reason for that is because they know they've got someone in the backfield in an Adrian Peterson who can break through or a Keywan Jones to get to that second level. And they know if they get that key block, it could be a huge run, and they've had a few of those this season. Uh, Keywan Jones is a single setback right now. And to Keywan Jones turning the corner at the 20 and dives to the three-yard line. Gain of 13 yards for Kiwan Jones. The penalty at the end of the play here, but an excellent block on the outside to spring Kiwan into the third level of the defense here. And let them sort this out. Legal hands against the, deep, against the offense. offense. Block in the back. Number four of the offense, 10 yards from the end of two. the run. He's getting, he's trying to get the job done maybe a little too hard. Well, Travis Wilson on the outside here, and we're going to see if we can see the see the penalty. And there's a good block right there. You get him on the ground. That's what allows Key One to get to the outside. And I don't know where the penalty is. See right there. Right there's there the, the push. That's the Travis back. Wilson getting a little bit extra on Fabian Washington. Scratch the 13-yard gain. Ball moves back to the 10-yard line after the penalty. So still first down and 17. And get it out to 27 for the first down. And Oklahoma will call a timeout. Oklahoma timeout, 4.13 to go, leading it 16 to nothing. So Oklahoma in control. They face the football deep in their own territory when we come back. Oklahoma on top 16 to nothing time to answer our best buy trivia question and we were asking you tonight who holds the Oklahoma record for touchdown passes in a game against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. How about that 1962 and it was just three. 
<laughs> My dear. Here we go. This time, Keyron Jones and Jones out to the 20-yard line. Jones with a nice gainer, a gain of 12 yards, much like the run he had just a moment ago. This time, no penalty markers. Josh Bullock's there to make the stop for Nebraska. Well, this defense a little bit different this year. Kevin Cosgrove, the new coordinator, a little bit different system, trying to get things squared away. And Kiwan Jones and the offense of the Sooners doing a good job. And talked about the changes. And one of the big ones is the absence of Bo Pelini, who's now here at the University of Oklahoma in the similar position as the co-defensive coordinator. Last year, the defense coordinator also assumed the head coach position, interim coach, head coach position for Nebraska. A lot of folks thought that he might get that head coaching job there, but uh, loose football and wisely. White falls on it. Yeah, follow up a third down. On, yeah, follow up on that is uh, you know, they decided to go with Bill Callahan and a lot of disappointment with a lot of fans for for the Cornhuskers thinking that Bo Pelini might be a good fit for that job. Well, Bo Pelini though this week he really wouldn't talk about it. Basically just said this is just another football game and you know it's something special but to his credit he said it's just I'm just just trying to get a job done here and I'm not going to talk about it. He coached them as you said it's Michigan State at the Alamo. It wasn't long after Bill Callahan got the job at Nebraska that Bo Pelini was here at Oklahoma. So third down and 12. White with plenty of time. Now pressure breaks down and it throws it complete. Travis Wilson, what a great job of coming back to the quarterback. Well, Jason White just buying time out of the pocket here. You know, his mobility is a lot better this year, Kevin. Coming off those two knee surgeries from a couple of years back, but uh, no braces this year. He's done a great job moving the pocket. He's got good offensive linemen up front, and they're just trying to keep him away from him. Jason White is buying extra time, gets a shot there at the end of the play from McPherson, but does a nice job throwing the ball down the field near midfield here for a first down for these Sooners. Gain of 36 yards. Concentration on both ends of the play. Right, go, right, go. Right, go, right, go. Right, go. Play action to Jones. Throws it again complete. This time it's Bradley, and Bradley has it at the 27-yard line. I beg your pardon, it's Travis Wilson. Wilson again. And you get the feeling that Jason White is in some kind of rhythm right now. And a Heisman Trophy winner a year ago, 40 touchdown passes on that season. This young man, I think he may be a better player this year, Kevin, doing the things that he needs to for this team just to do one thing, and that is to win. He's not worried about the numbers. He's not worried about the accolades, but he's doing the things that this football team needs to win at critical times and in critical games. Today, you see his numbers, and very impressive. Uh, Bob Stoops told us this week, he said he's never played better in his career at Oklahoma. Football he's playing right now. He's putting on a show tonight. This time throws it. Keyron Jones and Jones at the 10. Inside the five yard line goes Keywan Jones. Josh Bullock's kept him out of the end zone. Well, this is a very athletic offensive line. And when these guys can get out on the perimeter and block, does a great job for your tailback We're on the quick screen here. Jason White sets it up beautifully. Watch the defensive pressure run right by the lineman. You see Carter, number 50, the center, and then Devin Joseph, the right guard, pull outside and do a good job downfield. And he won trying to take him on and be physical himself inside that five-yard line. Last three passing plays, last three plays, 36 yards, 22, and 22 for Jason White, hooking up with Travis Wilson. Pitt sweep Jones. And Runnels takes him down after a short game. Also, Ira Cooper in there on the stop. Cooper may have gotten there first. Well, this Nebraska defense, they've got to tighten up here. They've got to find a way to slow this little machine down. It's not a little machine. I mean, it's a big machine. They've got a lot of weapons. It's a, it's a pick your poison kind of a thing. Do you stop the run or do you stop the passing game? Something that uh, no one has really figured out yet this year. And take a look at what's happened so far in total yards in this football game. Oklahoma. Way out ahead in that category. 190 more total yards. But it could be huge here if Nebraska can keep Oklahoma out of the end zone with a minute left in the first half. Jason White throws for the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. It's Brandon Jones, his third touchdown catch of the season. Boy, White is spreading it around tonight. Well, it's that play action passing game. When your running game works as well as it does and the things that come off of that passing game, shooting that running game, 
make you have to worry about that up front. You think you're going to pound the ball into the end zone, and Jason White doing a good job of delivering here. Brandon Jones, number 81, the senior comes across. Good target inside. It's just man coverage, and he just beats his coverage. Fabian Washington not able to stay with him. Going after by DiCarlo is good. Take another look. And no, there's nobody in front of Jason White. That's the, the easy part of it. It's a throw and catch here, and it's just man-to-man -man coverage. And good job by uh, Brandon Jones coming across the middle. And this is almost too easy here for the Sooners. On that drive, Jason White made it look easy the entire drive. He was four for four for 85 yards on that drive. Well, he's been very efficient all year long. Only four interceptions on the year and does the right things with the football, makes great decisions. That's the reason he won that Heisman Trophy a year ago and, you know, probably on target to do the same things here, same thing again this season. He's missed on three passes today. 16 out of 19, 203 yards. It's not like he's got an 80-yard touchdown pass in this one. His longest of the day is a 36-yard connection. Yeah, and what about the big the touch pass to Willie Roberts? That was a great throw mm -hmm. from the quarterback Absolutely. to the big tight end, the back of the end zone. Those are not easy throws to make. He makes all the tough throws. The throws inside, I think he throws the deep ball very well, and that touch pass we talked about, very complete quarterback. This comes to Brandon Jackson, and Jackson to the 21-yard line. For Nebraska with about 53 seconds to work with here in this first half. A reminder, coming up in just a little while, it's the Seattle's halftime report, plenty of stats and highlights, plus a preview. That Arizona USC game coming up. That's with Mike Goldberg, Helen Winslow, and Billy Ray Smith. The Seattle's halftime report coming up in just a matter of seconds right now. 53 seconds left for Joe Daly to work with. Corey Ross is back in at the eye back spot. They hand it to Ross. He runs right into Lance Mitchell after a gain of a few. And Mitchell, the senior from San Francisco, California, makes the stop. I think he's played his best ball games the last two or three weeks. Lance Mitchell has stepped up his play. A couple of 10 tackle performances the last couple of weeks and really made a, in a presence on the defensive side for Oklahoma. Missed all but three games in 03 with that knee injury. He's back strong in 2004. Really starting to click right now. Shooters have been clicking all year. Leading 23 to nothing. And it to Ross again, and Ross, uh, he paid dearly for a couple of yard gain on what will be the final play of the first half here in Norman, Oklahoma. Well, the story of this first half, the play of Jason White, the defense of Oklahoma. They got a bit of a slow start. They come out with 20 points in the second quarter, and Jason White, a big reason for that, 16 out of 19 in the passing department for 203 yards and two touchdowns. He has been spreading it around as well. Wilson and Clayton both with four catches in this one. Kiwan Jones, Will Peoples, J.D. Runnels both all with two catches. So you've got six players with at least two catches in this first half. Let's go down to John Radigan. Yeah, we got Bob Stoops, coach. That was like an exclamation point and a good have a long drive to end the half. Had to feel pretty good. Uh, really was. You know, Jason's came up uh, big again with some big plays and uh, protection's been great. And, uh, receivers are finding some holes, so uh, it's going well. What do you have to work on in the second half? Hey, listen, you'll, you won't take it for granted. We just got to come out and have another really good half to coming back. Appreciate it, coach. That is Bob Stoops. His team leads it 23 to nothing at halftime. The second half of action coming up. But first, we send it to the studio. Mike and Kellen and Billy Ray. Number two team in the nation flexing its muscles in the first half. 23 nothing, Oklahoma leading Nebraska. Kevin Eschenfelder, Gary Reasons, welcome you back to a cold night in Norman. It's colder tonight for Nebraska. I tell you, it has been the Jason White show in this first half. Jason White has been very efficient, had a great first half. 
throwing the football around. His receivers are doing a good job in the running game. Everything is working for Oklahoma. Not to say that for, for Nebraska. They haven't gotten a whole lot going offensively, just 80-plus yards of offense, and Jason White has been uh, pretty proficient tonight. Yeah, take a look at our Zales first-half stats and take a look at the top number. Only three first downs for Nebraska in this first half. Well, OU has done everything they need to do in this football game. Passing yards, 230 yards for Oklahoma. Jason White, 16 of 19 in the first half, doing a great job with a couple of touchdown passes. Turnover is not key in this football game, but overall, four in the red area for Oklahoma. They've done a good job moving the football and done everything they needed to in this football game. So right now it's very much a dominant effort by the by the Sooners. All right, let's head down to the sideline. John Radigan. Yeah, Kevin, talk to Bill Callahan as he was coming out. And ironically, in spite of those offensive numbers for Nebraska that you showed, his focus in the locker room was defense. Says they've got to tighten things up in the secondary. Those three-tier passes that Oklahoma likes to throw have been killing them. He says so has the screen pass. He said they're going to dig in and they're going to come for the fight this entire second half. Quick update on Adrian Peterson as well from the Oklahoma sideline. A A all day, AD as they call him, did not practice on Tuesday, and he was held out of contact for the entire week while Bob Stoops was emphatic that he would in fact play and that he was healthy. It appears that that left shoulder is a little more troublesome than was originally thought. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on him and see if we see any more of Adrian Peterson in the second half. Uh, Kiwan Jones, thank you, John. Kiwan Jones getting the job done in the first half. Peterson with just two carries. Well, last time Oklahoma lost to a Big 12 North team, it was to Nebraska. Tonight, though, Kiwan Jones making sure that's not going to happen. Well, Kiwan Jones, hey, he started the season at the tailback spot here for the Sooners this year. And Hey, he's not a bad one-two punch to go to with Adrian Peterson not in the football game. Doing a good job running the ball here, catching the screen, screen passes and being proficient for that offense. Corey Ross handed off on the draw play. Ross with room to run at the 30. Has 20, has 24 yards as he's run out of bounds at the 44-yard line by Marcus Walker. But a big hit for Nebraska on the first play of the second half, a gain of 24. Well, this is a big play here for this offense, and Ross with the speed of the eye-back position here for the Cornhusker gets it to the outside, and looks like he might take it all the way once he breaks through the first line of the defense here. But good job here by uh, the young freshman, Walker, knocking him out of bounds. Now, Kevin, in the first half, Nebraska was only to get just past midfield to the 49-yard line of the Sooners and looking to try to Turn that around here. Get something going offensively here early in this third quarter. Good numbers for Corey Ross tonight as Ross becomes the 27th Cornhusker to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. He's over 1,000 yards with those 78 tonight. 1,015 for the season to be exact. Daly on the play action. Daly wanting to go deep, and it's almost intercepted. That was Dante Nichols who almost got there, but just... A step slow. Nicholson already with an interception this season. 3 Big 12 Conference Defensive Newcomer of the Year, but he couldn't get there quick enough. Well, good job of play action fake that time by Daly on the offensive side. And actually, all the de all the defensive linemen for the Sooners not able to get up the field. Dan Cody, haven't talked about him a lot tonight. Hasn't got the pressure on the quarterback, but really hasn't had to because they've stopped all their running game pretty much close to the line of scrimmage except for that... Uh, Big run here by Corey Ross to start this third quarter. Second down and 10. Again, Daly this time in trouble, and Daly won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and 11 coming up. Clint Ingram was the man that was there to blow that play up from the beginning. A lot of speed here about from the Sooners defensively. That's what they uh, hang their hat on here. They convert players from secondary players to linebackers and linebackers to defensive linemen. Bob Stoops and Brent Venables is co-defense coordinator here with the Sooners and Bo Pelini. They do a good job of recruiting players to fit the scheme here for this fast Sooner defense. Third down and 11. 82,000 plus trying to make it as difficult as humanly possible for Nebraska. Corey Ross, he slipped down as he took the handoff. It's punt time for Nebraska. He was going nowhere. Rufus Alexander was going to meet him in the hole. Corey Ross did what he had to do to protect himself. Rufus Alexander, the linebacker, sliding through there. They bend but not break here. The center defense a big play. Corey Ross to start this drive, but uh, nothing going here after that first down. Sam Cook will punt it away. The walk on from Seward, Nebraska. Hunts for the fourth time tonight. Numbers won't, won't be hurt at all tonight, that's for sure. High snap, but nicely. Clayton calls for the fair catch, and he makes it at the 22-yard line. 
Well, this week, Fox NFL Sunday returns with a doubleheader beginning with America's number one pregame show. Then the Buccaneers look to slow down Michael Vick and the Atlanta Falcons. Then the Vikings battle the Packers in a showdown of NFC North Supremacy or other regional action. Fox NFL Sunday begins tomorrow at noon, 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Pacific at 9 Pacific in Fox Sports High Definition only on Fox. Jason White back out there after a tremendous first half in that football game. Very good job running that offense, making some good throws, getting out of the pocket when need be, and just a great presence in that backfield. And off and out to the 24-yard line, and there is Adrian Peterson. It's Peterson back in the game, his third carry of the day. Yeah, not a whole lot there for him, but uh, Adrian, you know, he's probably not going to have to work a whole lot tonight. I think that uh, they decided to the Kewan Jones quality reps here in this football game. Be surprised if uh, Adrian's going to be asked to do a lot. We saw last week in that football game against Texas A&M where he had the uh, uh, shoulder pads taken off. And but as you take a look at Jason White with what he's done tonight, this is exceptional here. 80, 82 percent completion percentage in the first half and a couple of touchdowns. Just ridiculous. Numbers. Jason White again. He'll throw. And this one's caught by Wilson and Wilson. Will move the sticks as he has enough for the first down out to the 33-yard line, a gain of eight. Now Chuck Long, who's the coordinator, offensive coordinator here, the coach winner, coordinates the passing game here for the Sooners. And this is a good job of design. Travis Wilson takes it up the field a step or two, then on the quick slant, comes inside, and Jason White reads it very well. And he knows exactly where he's going to throw the football. He's got not press coverage on the top side of the field, which is where he throws it to Wilson, but uh, nice job of distributing the football. And you see the numbers for Wilson tonight. Catch of the evening. Going deep again, and this one is caught at the 45-yard line. Travis Wilson went up, and he paid the price and held on to the football. Well, Kevin, this is all made possible because of what this offense is doing for the Sooners. We talked about him blocking. Watch here on the right side. That's Jamal Brown. No one has gotten around him all year this year. Call him triple zero. No block, no knockdowns. Excuse me, nobody's touched the quarterback, no sacks, no hurries, and that young man has done a great job, as you see Jason White, the beneficiary of it, standing back there throwing the ball down the field to Travis Wilson. You know what they say, you're going to get hit one way or the other, you may as well catch the football, and Travis Wilson did just that. He's sixth catch of the night. That's 32 for the season. Adrian Peterson attracting a crowd at the 38-yard line. Josh Bullock's finally making the stop. It was Bullock's with the big hit on Travis Wilson over the middle, but not before Adrian Peterson with a nice gain on first down. Yeah, Sooner fans used to seeing this young man run and run and run over 100 yards in the last nine ball games. Each of those a NCAA freshman record. Personal foul, number one of the defense. 15 yards from the end of the play, first down. That was a very late penalty marker. As a matter of fact, I never I saw it come in. Fly either. Well, McPherson called for the big 15-yard penalty. And Bill Callahan trying to get his defense squared away. Kevin Cosgrove, the new, new defender of theirs. Was that Wisconsin? Those Big 12, excuse me, Big 10 college football, new here to this conference, and trying to get this black shirt defense squared away. Jason White, 15th consecutive completion, and this time Bradley. And Bradley takes it in for the touchdown. Kevin, over the last three weeks, Mark Bradley has made some sensational plays here for the Sooner offense, and this one ranks right up there. A couple weeks ago against the Oklahoma State Cowboys, doing a good job tipping the ball to himself and running away from the defense. Now you see the quick little pass outside. It's one-on-one -on -one and gets a little shake and bacon. Watch him tight walk down the sideline. See the secondary coming across there, and he can't get him knocked out of bounds. Josh Bullocks didn't get him out as he runs away from Grigsby there, and then Bullocks does not knock him out. Good job of walking the I tight rope on the <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just good job of footwork there by uh, that young man. Carlo for the point after and a 30-point lead. And he is perfect. Speaking of perfect, Jason White has been just about as perfect as you can get tonight. 
Bradley takes it in for six more, and the Sooners are rolling 30 to nothing. With Gary Reasons and John Radigan, I'm Kevin Eschenfeld as we welcome you back to Norman, Oklahoma, where the Sooners lead it 30 to nothing. Last time these two teams met, Oklahoma was number two in the country. Nebraska was number three. Nebraska won that game. That's the last time Oklahoma has lost to a Big 12 Conference North Division team. Tonight they are in control and flexing their muscles as the number two team in the land. Yeah, nothing's been happening offensively for Nebraska, not been able to move the ball down the field, but Oklahoma, as this scoring drive indicates, very efficient on the night, five plays, 79 yards, and White, 14 straight completions. The man is on fire, and hey, that's why this offense is so good, because Jason White is the quarterback. They've got a good running game, the offensive line. They're going to be tough for anybody that they face with the offensive football that they play here. Corey Ross has been one of the few bright spots tonight for Nebraska. He's got 77 yards on 15 carries. And they hand it to him. Ross fighting. They talk about how gutsy of a runner he is. And he fights ahead for a tough five yards. The junior from Denver did just join us, a young man that had turf toe, really practices limitedly during the season. As a matter of fact, he hardly practices at all at this point. Just finds a way to get it done on Saturday. Yeah, he gets it done. He had 194 yards rushing against Missouri earlier this year and had an 86-yard run against, uh, against Mizzou as well. So young man can get it done when he gets his hands on the football. Replaced by Brandon Jackson here on second down. Play action. They'll try to throw it back. And a little over the head of Dusty Kaiser, the tight end who was releasing. Well, you've seen what uh, Nebraska has tried to do most of the night, and that is try to get their running game going. They need to get a little balance there, get take the pressure off the quarterback, Joe Daly. You know, just a first-year guy in the Bill Callahan's new system there, trying to get things squared away. And it's not easy for that quarterback to get all the reads right and everything early on. So there's a growing pain here by this young quarterback and also for this offense. And sometimes you got to do what you do best, and that's run the football. And, you know that Nebraska's done that for years. It's third down and five. Empty backfield. Daly, three-step drop, throws it. It's complete. It depends on where they spot the football. Marcus Walker was there as soon as the catch was made by Isaiah Fluellen. It's going to be right at the 30-yard line. Uh, not seeing where the uh, sticks are across the field, but... Uh, Probably going to be a first down here, I think, for Nebraska. Well, Walker, the young man that took the red shirt off last week against Texas A&M. Freshman from Garland, Texas, was there to make the stop immediately. And you want to show up that secondary, get better play from that cornerback position. And it's enough for the first down. As Flewellen went straight to the stick and made the catch. And smart wide receiver will do that. He's where he needs to be on the field, and that was the case for Flewellen. Second man through is Corey Ross, and there was just absolutely nothing to do it. No way anything was going to get done right there because, well, Brodney Poole, the safety was already coming, and he was in the backfield when the handoff was made. And Brodney Poole plays almost like a linebacker for the Sooner defense. He's up there a lot around the line of scrimmage all the time and in a lot of the fricas there inside running the football. And doing a good job here for the Sooner defense. He really came into his own this year and leading his team in tackles. A second down and 11. There's Ross again, and once again, Brodney Poole is right there. Now, good patience that time by Brodney Poole in the middle of the field, scoots up to the line of scrimmage, and Corey Ross, not easy to tackle. He's pretty quick. We've seen his footwork out there. And Give credit to Brody Poole, good patience here. You see all the open space there, and there's Brody Poole just scoring him up and doing a good job of getting him to the ground. So no gain, third down and 11. Big play here for Nebraska. They're trying to get something going in the right direction. This would be a start. It's complete, but short of the first down is 
Grant Mulkey, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas, made this catch. It'll be well short of the first down, and it'll be punt time once again for Nebraska. Kevin, okay, that's a couple of times now with this offense we've seen on a third down throw that thrown the ball underneath the opportunity to get that first down. Really didn't see any receivers from Nebraska getting past the first down with an opportunity to throw that ball down there for the completion. Well, Cook has been a busy man. He punts again. Clayton calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 19-yard line. Take a look at our Avis leaders, and interesting as far as you look at the Heisman Trophy winners by school. No one has more than Notre Dame, Ohio State, and USC in with five, but you see Oklahoma and Nebraska right there in the mix, and I think the bottom is really a great point that you make. Talk about that. Yeah, no team has won three straight, no consecutive years three straight. Uh, there's a lot of teams that have actually won back-to-back -back different players or with uh, Archie Griffin, the same player, but with Jason White uh, having a chance to win that Heisman Trophy this year, he might actually be the uh, number two back-to-back -back all timer. And maybe with Adrian Peterson, they may get three here as you look at some of the Heisman contenders this year. And Adrian Peterson certainly having a good year and be a good job here for uh, this team to possibly get that Heisman Trophy. Another one. Well, here's one of them. Adrian Peterson gets it out to the 48-yard line. One of the guys they call the trophies. When you talk about trophies, and Adrian Peterson certainly is going to get some of those before his playing days are over and get him a chance to get the ball in the backfield. He wants to run, run, run. This young man knows what north and south really means to be a tailback and powerful runner and does a good job with that football and smart with it. And, you know, quarterbacks, they do the things too. Jason White, we talked about him and his leadership and the possibility of getting another Heisman Trophy. Talking to Kenny Mossman, the sports information director here from Oklahoma yesterday, and Talking about uh, Jason White winning that Heisman a year ago, so he was really surprised. Did not have an, any idea, even the day of the event, that uh, he was going to win that award. And it off to Peterson again. Peterson trying to reverse field. And Adrian Peterson to the 48-yard line. I want to verify, just to make sure you understand, when we say the trophies, I said they call them the trophies, that's the Nebraska coaching staff that calls them the trophies. They say you got to try to stop the trophies. Yeah. One of that is Jason White is right there as well. Well, Jason White, his numbers, you know, he's just adding to these. These are before the ball game. You see what he's done, and obviously some contenders here as well, Leinert and Rodgers and Smith, these guys all possibly Heisman contenders, but I think that Jason White is setting himself apart. If he finishes strong, he certainly has a chance to be that consecutive uh, Heisman Trophy. And possibly that third may come next year when uh, Adrian Peterson gets a chance to go with his sophomore season and see what he can complete then. Well, this one's complete to the 45 yard line. Sean Bradley, the strong side linebacker, there to make the stop as James Moses makes the catch. Moses had a big game last week against Texas A&M, had a 40-yard catch and also a touchdown grab as well. It's his 13th catch of the season. It's, we're under seven minutes to go here in the third quarter in Oklahoma, leading at 30 to nothing. Third down and three. White rolls the pocket left. Thought about keeping it. He's met rudely by who else? Barrett Rude. We haven't talked a lot about Barrett Rude, but he's a tackling machine for the Nebraska football team and all-time leading tackler for that uh, for that defense and just kind of keeps moving up the charts. Double, yeah, double-digit tackles are nothing new for Barrett Rude, number 38 coming around, and Jason White trying to pull it down and get that. And nice job of tackling. Pretty good lick. Yeah, Barrett Rude, seventh Big 12, seventh player in Big 12 history to have 400 tackles in a career and like you said he's the all-time leader at nebraska that is saying something he's a young man from right there in lincoln so kind of goes back deep to see a very rare punt from oklahoma tonight Mike ferguson sets to kick it away Ferguson trying to pin Nebraska deep. And they can't do it. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, but it was an A for effort for Mark Bradley. So the touchback will bring it back out to the 20-yard line. 527 to go. Cornhuskers have the ball. 
Well, the scooter is in cruise control right now as Oklahoma leads it 30 to nothing. Well, Dave Thomas created the Wendy's High School Heisman to honor top students nationwide who excel in academics, athletics, and community service. Go to wendys.com to find out more and see your state's nominees, scholarships, athletic citizenship. Wendy's High School Heisman. 5.27 to go. With Gary Regions and John Radigan, Kevin Eschenfelder with you in Norman, Oklahoma, and Bailey goes down. Big Lynn Magruder, the senior from Las Vegas, making the play. Yeah, the big defensive tackle just squares up here on the bottom side of the screen and pressures, and then Joe Daly trying to get something there. You see Dan Cody around the top and can't get out of uh, the grasp there of Magruder. Excited about that play. A lot of speed around the corner here with Dan Cody. He's got uh, eight sacks on the season, leads the team, and reason for the quarterback stepping up there in front of Magruder. That's second down and 13. Corey Ross on this direction. Again, it was Ingram in the backfield, and Lance Mitchell made Corey Ross change direction. He runs right in to Lance Mitchell as Mitchell makes the play. Ingram was there first. Well, it's tough to get anything going against his defense. You see the linebackers filling the hole pretty well. Lance Mitchell stepping in there and also playing Ingram. So a couple of linebackers filling that hole and doing a nice job here for the center defense. Tough to go against the center defense on third and ten. Brian, that right now, third down, 10, throw it underneath, and it's complete. Corey Ross, and Ross has the first down out to the 42-yard line. Rodney Poole finally knocking him off his feet. Trying to roll the pocket just a little bit, but then the shovel pass underneath to Corey Ross, and it just opened up inside. You'll take a look here. You're going to see a big gap. Oh, if you hold it right there, you'll see the gap that I'm talking about. Then Corey Ross is going to come right up in. Good job by Nebraska. Good execution that time and gets into the secondary of the Sooners. Gain of 32. This time it's Brandon Jackson and Brandon Jackson goes up to the 45 yard line. A couple more on first down. He gained four. So it's second down and six. Lance Mitchell making this there. Just giving uh, Corey Ross a break. He's back in the football game now. And Nebraska needs to get something going. Haven't had a lot of success in this football game. We talked about it only getting into the Oklahoma's territory once, and that was in the first half to the 49-yard line. Haven't gotten there here in the second half, but uh, a chance to get something going here. Ross again, once again. Gay Ron Allen is right there to meet the ball carrier as he takes the handoff. Well, Gayron is putting together some type of game tonight. And so is this Sooner defense, doing a good job against this Nebraska team. No points, nothing going against them right now. And Gayron Allen, nobody blocks him, so he does what a linebacker likes to do, step up in the hole and hit somebody. And doing a good job here tonight against the uh, Nebraska team. And I'll tell you, Nebraska, the last time they've been shut out, it was back in 1996 against that uh, Arizona State Swarm defense. The Desert Storm Swarm. Nebraska with only 90 yards rushing. That was Arizona State on Fox. You think about that Arizona defense. Arizona State got it done that night. That's the third down, and there's nothing there. He's going to strung the play out, wait for the guys in the red to come up and make the play. And those guys in red are doing a good job. There's no doubt about that. A lot of speed we talked about on the defense here, and they're coming up and making plays. and. Nebraska, got to ask a lot of questions. What are we going to get going against this team? But I tell you, it's not easy to go going against a very talented athletic defensive football team that the Sooners have. Cook will punt it away once again. Clayton goes back deep. Clayton, a very late fair catch signal. And It'll be first and 10 for Oklahoma at the 18 yard line. We're going to take a timeout. There's 34 to go as the Sooners get the ball back, leading by 30. Oklahoma leading at 30 to nothing is the number two team in the land, looking like every bit that tonight. You know, we talked about Bo Pelini and the well, relationships between these two coaches, and you know, it goes even deeper when you take a look at John Blake, the Nebraska assistant coach, the former head coach at Oklahoma, where he was uh, head coach 96, 97, and 98. And 
There's some, you know, some bit of a war of words this week. Yeah, John Blake uh, moving on and good news was that they brought in Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops really the transition here and the beneficiary of, uh, of this program and we turned it around. A lot of things changed when Bob Stoops came on campus and for the like of the senior fans. In an article this week, Blake was quoted as saying that he, something to the effect that he thought he had the program headed in the right direction. He was 12 and 22 in his three seasons at Oklahoma, and Bob Stoops countered with saying basically he disagreed, and that's well. The mark on John Blake is that he's an excellent football recruiter, does a great job getting kids into the program. Defensive line coach, he was with the Dallas Cowboys in that capacity, and had a chance to hang his hat here in Norman for for three seasons, but uh, really just didn't get the job done. But uh, I think that uh, you know sometimes you take those growing pains, you take a chance on a John Blake, and it just didn't work out. But good news is for Sooner fans, they got Bob Stoops, got a national championship, and a chance to possibly do one again this season. They throw this one out of place, and Clayton is knocked down at the 21-yard line, and that was defended very well by Fabian Washington, junior from Bradenton, Florida. It is 17 consecutive pass completions by Jason White, which sets a new Oklahoma record. Doesn't seem like he's missed one in about an hour and a half. <laughs> he's playing pretty it's been well. Been longer than that, actually. This guy's a big reason without Jamal Brown, the right offensive tackle. I called him triple zero earlier. Uh, no sacks allowed this year. No hurries on the quarterback, and no hits on the yeah, quarterback. He hadn't allowed a touch. Triple zeros. That's pretty good by that man. Going downfield. Bradley has it. And Bradley down to the 21-yard line. Jason White has completed 18 consecutive passes, and this one's got the Sooners rolling again. Yeah, and that was no easy throw and catch. He threaded that ball down there nicely. Good touch on the football. And Bradley, who's making huge plays here now for the Sooner offense, a chance to stretch the field. He does that very well. Little pump fake sets the defense, and then right over the top, nice throw and catch. No, no break in stride. And Safety has to come over and make the tackle. And Gain of 63 yards. That's a the record. School there. record continues to grow. And it does so on the final play of the third quarter. And take a look at the numbers Jason White is putting up tonight. 23 out of 26. His team leads by 30 at the end of the third quarter in Norman, Oklahoma. Oklahoma and Nebraska have combined for 12 national championships and 81 conference championships tonight. Oklahoma looking every bit the national champion contender. Well, he's got a new nickname for me. What's that? I'm going to call him H2, Heisman Square. That, that, that's a, that, I think Jason White is on target and on fire tonight. Well, Jason White has completed his school record 18 consecutive passes, going for 19 and just over the top of Jawan Rankins. Almost was able to pull that one in. Okay, we'll excuse him for that throw. 18 consecutive. You can write this one down in the record books, folks. Yeah, just another mark on his uh, on his report card. Jason White, an exceptional career here for the Sooners, his six-year senior and Heisman Trophy a year ago and having a great night tonight. And you really want to put an exclamation point on this football game. I, and they talked about this football team coaches talk to us, Kevin, that they want to play more of a complete game, and they really hadn't done that the past several weeks. They felt like that they came in and played all phases and played a complete game. But they would get some momentum that they need as they go towards the Big 12 championship and possibly a national championship. Adrian Peterson, that was strung out nicely. And Peterson didn't really stand a chance. The white shirted defense, the black shirts were there. Yeah, good defense at time. It's what you need to do. Play down the line of scrimmage and you take a back. He likes to run north and south and you turn him east and west and not as efficient that way. And anytime you can turn it, take a running back where his shoulders are not scored line of scrimmage and get him going east and west. It's a good job by the defense. And Bernard Thomas slowed that play down and Titus Adams came in and finished it off. And Adrian Peterson may be shut out for his second string of 100 yard games. Uh, I'm sure that here tonight, just 42 yards. Kewan so Jones. Kewan Jones in here on this third down. Complete to Kewan. They set up the screen. Blockers in front, but Kewan steps out of bounds short of the first down. Ran that screen to the short side of the field. Daniel Bullocks was there to escort him out of bounds, and it's a fourth down coming up. And Sooner fans are saying, "Go for it." 
Well, might as well. They might do that too because uh, here's Trey DeCarlo coming on the field. Jason White trying to get the little screen pass here to Kiwan Jones. You got the blockers out front, but good job by Bullocks coming across number 14 to get him out of bounds. Otherwise, might have gotten it first. DeCarlo looking for his second field goal of the night. First was good from 32 yards out. This will be from 34. Footer. Pushed it to the left. So early on in the fourth quarter, the Sooners, a rare scoring opportunity missed tonight. Yeah, but Jason White doing a good job moving the football, throwing the ball down the field to Mark Bradley and the Nebraska defense tightening there, stiffening it up, at least caused them to attempt a field goal. And Bob Stoops can't be very pleased with Trey DiCarlo. He has not kicked very well in the last several weeks. We talked about his missed field goals, missed an extra point earlier in this football game. Well, Nebraska gets it first down at 10 as they take the football at the 20-yard line. Hand it off to Corey Ross. And I want to tell you, Corey Ross, no matter what the score was in this game, and right now it's 30 to nothing, this is a tough young man. And coaching staff calls him the absolute positive leader of our offense. And you see why. I mean, this is a gutsy performance tonight. He's up to 80 yards on 21 carries. Well, he just keeps grinding. That's what you have to do. Uh, you know, you've got to give your offense some kind of a spark, and he's trying to be that spark. He's had a couple of nice runs in this football game. Second down and five. Here's Ross again, and Ross has the first down out across the 30-yard line to the 31. Aaron Allen who's going to put together a nice night tonight. He'll be looking forward to watching films on Sunday morning. Yeah, he's rolled in there pretty well, played the weak linebacker and also the middle linebacker spot there for his defense tonight. And they've rolled their linebackers in there and all their defensive fronts. So they've had a lot of fresh bodies out there on the field for the Sooner defense. And most of the starters in there on the secondary, though, haven't rotated too many of those guys in the football game. First down, under 13 minutes to go in the ball game. Here's Ross. And that's just a matter of the offensive line not pushing as hard as the defensive line. And the defensive line was able to win the battle, and there was no place to go. 30 to nothing. Oklahoma on top. First down line is brought to you by Overstock.com for name brand products at clearance prices. It's all about the O. Good news for this Sooner defense is actually that guy right there, number 28, to get him back out on the field. That's Antonio Perkins. Playing cornerback for this football team. Haven't called his name a lot tonight, but then again, hasn't given up anything in the secondary. You see him here on the force. Ross cuts it back against the grain. Ross to midfield and down to the 49-yard line goes Corey Ross. Ross with a gain of 21 yards. We talked about the... Antonio Perkins on the outside coming and Corey Ross with the handoff inside goes right away from him here and see the pressure from the left side and he's going to cut this ball back right against the green right across from Lance Mitchell Dan Cody misses a tackle as well gets into the second level of the defense and Dante Nicholson forced to come over and make the play. With Brandon Jackson and Brandon Jackson really didn't have any place to go. Oh, Lynn McGruder and a bunch of his friends Larry Burdine right there it was Burdine who Came in to make the stop. And tempers flare just a bit. It is 30 to nothing with under 12 minutes to go. Now they're now at midfield, a chance to get into center territory. And they got to the 49 once tonight. Nebraska had only three first downs in the first half. It's a work in progress, obviously, for Bill Callahan. Second down, 10. Ross trying to win the edge and takes it ahead for three very tough yards. And Antonio Perkins was there to make the tackle. I'd like to welcome those of you in the Bay Area. Watching tonight, I'm Kevin Eschenfeld alongside Gary Reese and John Radigan here at Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. Number two team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners. Leading Nebraska 30 to nothing, and this is the 81st meeting between these two teams, one of the great old rivalries in college football, renewed tonight. 
last eight meetings between these two teams, at least one of the teams in the matchup has been in the top five. And Joe Daly wants to call a timeout. So Daly calls a timeout with 10.30 to go. Cornhuskers still fighting the good fight despite being down 30. Let's take a timeout. We're back to Norman on a moment. Here's our Dr. Pepper game summary is 84,916 fans on hand tonight to see Jason White put on quite a show. He really has. He's been on fire and done a great job distributing the football with this. Nine different receivers have caught balls for the Sooners tonight, and uh, Jason White pulling every rabbit out of his head. Did a great job leading this football team. Third down and seven for Joe Daly and company. They throw this one complete to Dusty Kaiser. He has the first down for Nebraska down to the 35-yard line. This is the deepest penetration of the night for the Cornhuskers. And you get the, work the ball to the tight end, and you talked about Jason White. Jason White done. Talked about distributing the football. He's done a great job getting a. Big tight end into the football game here. Willie Roberts with the touchdown pass and then just throwing the ball around the yard. Good protection up front and getting the ball out to everyone on his football team. Runnels, Bradley, everyone here, the receiving core for Oklahoma getting into the action. And Jason White showing that, hey, maybe H2, Heisman Square, a chance to win it once again. Nine different receivers have caught balls tonight for Oklahoma. Corey Ross again. Ross. He is hogtied down at the 31-yard line. And Lance Mitchell got the right arm around him underneath the neck of the of Corey Ross and pulled him down. A lot of coaches on the sideline. I saw John Blake wanting to get a flag on that, but uh, nothing showed up on the sideline. Well, the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the oh, Overstock.com. Nine and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. A second down and six for Nebraska. Trying to avoid being shut out for the first time in a long time. It was in the state in the late 90s, the last team to do it to the Cornhusker. Ross turning the corner and paying the price at the end of the run. Boy, he and Dante Nicholson went helmet to helmet. That's what you call squaring up. <laughs> they both squared up right on the sideline and Pretty good action there, and a couple of a couple of players wanted to get after it. Listen. Oh my goodness! That is a serious collision. I think he'll go back and get some more too. I don't think there's any quit left. Quitting that young man. No question. Corey Ross, 124 yards rushing in. And a timeout is taken by Nebraska. We'll talk about that receiving core, Wilson, Clayton, Bradley, Jones, and Peoples, along with J.D. Runnels, have caught at least two balls tonight for OU. But the defense getting the job done as well. They're pitching a shutout, leading 30 to nothing. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma, where the Sooners lead it 30 to nothing. I am joined by OU women's basketball coach Sherry Cole. National Signing Day, the early period was Wednesday, and you had a huge coup. You got the Twins out of Piedmont, California. Yes, we did. It was a pretty exciting day in Norman on Wednesday. Obviously, you had Courtney and Ashley Paris. They were ranked among the top five, both of them in the country, right? Yeah, they're very special kids. They're extraordinary kids and extraordinary basketball players. And as good as your program has been over the years, this is the first two top five kids you've ever had. Yeah, we only have one high school All-American on our roster, Chelsea Welch, and she's the highest ranking kid we've ever had. So to have two in the top six, seven, depending on which poll you look at, it's pretty special. All right, you start the season on Friday, then you have a game on Sunday, then you go to the Bahamas for a tournament. Do you need a sideline reporter at the Bahamas tournament? <laughs> You'll have to get in line. The waiting list is long. I may just go now, guys, and scout it just in case they need me down there. Sherry, thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Back upstairs to you, Kevin. Always looking for that free ride. Yeah, I'll yeah, tell you what, right. that is a phenomenal basketball coach right there. She Brandon there. Jackson did a nice job running the football for the for the Huskers down here. And here they go back to Corey Ross. Ross with a, a bit of a hole that closed in a hurry thanks to Lance Mitchell once again. As Mitchell, middle linebacker, filling the hole, doing it the right way. So physical defense tonight for Oklahoma, making a bit of a statement. You know, would love nothing better than to pitch the shutout tonight. But Nebraska's knocking on the door. Yeah, that shutout is in jeopardy here. 
Huskers down inside the seven yard line and second down situation. Ross hit by Lynn Magruder. And uh, Magruder gives you a bear hug, you know it, and that was a bear hug from Big Lynn Magruder. 6'3", 300 pounder, a big fellow inside, doing a good job getting off the block and making the tackle, and done that several times tonight in the inside run game. Big fellow right in here, going to right come arm. inside. <laughs> that right arm just wraps him up and takes him down. <laughs> After the tackle, a Nebraska player down. I think it may be Ross. Well, Corey Ross, yeah, got up for a moment and then went back down. Oh. Magruder with the big tackle, and, and Ross, he is. Well, it's been some punishing running tonight. He's. Got the 130 yards, but 30 carries. It has been a tough go for him, and uh, he's being attended to as we speak. And you know, we talked about no quitting. That young man came back in and took a pretty good shot on the sideline. Several plays back, but they're back in there, and probably just got the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully, anyway, and he'll be back up pretty quick. Uh, Nebraska a program that in this first year it has been ups and downs for Bill Callahan's ball club. That's for sure. And, yeah, it's been a lot of inconsistency. Matter of fact, they have only won back-to-back -back games just once this season. Alternated wins and losses against Kansas Tech, Baylor, K-State, Missouri, and Iowa State in the conference. And tonight they're 8-18 away from losing two in a row again. Now it's a, that is a good, good sight, obviously. I think you were right. A big arm from Lynn McGruder came around and Probably took the wind out of me. Take a look at the strength of schedule and look at this. We were going perusing the list. Seven of the top 21 toughest schedules in the nation reside in the Big 12 Conference. And six of those seven right there in the Big 12 South. Well, and where did Oklahoma go? They went to Texas A&M. They, they beat Texas and Oklahoma uh, State. And Oklahoma State. So, I mean, that's a lot of travel they've done and games they've won on the road. So they have really paid, the do, paid their dues. And, that is some of the toughest uh, scheduling there is here. You look at Auburn and USC, not, not as close to Oklahoma, number 10 in strength of schedule. That's right. Uh, uh, USC, 37th, as you said, number one in the BCS. Auburn, number three in the BCS. There you see Corey Ross, and Corey Ross. Be very careful with him, and they are taking him to the dressing room. There's no chances. The leader of this Nebraska offense. You hate, obviously, hate to see that. And just the gutsy performance he was able to put together tonight. And he will be hard to replace, that's for sure. Take a look at the play one more time and you see where Magruder's arm just came over. It just came around and watch as he lands. I think that's what the happen happened is he lands kind of sideways there, kind of got twisted a little bit. And Caught up underneath there, and hopefully he's going to be fine. Well, he's done for the night. It's a third down. It's a third down and fourth. Nebraska can get a first down inside the one. David Horn is the single setback. Pitch it to Horn. Blockers in front, but can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Once again, Gayron Allen was there to just blow the play up, and Brodney Poole was right there with him. Yeah, Brodney Poole did a good job on the outside, skating and kind of the run force here to the outside. Take a look at Poole. He's going to come and get right here and slow everything down. Good pace inside. Then there's Gayron Allen flying through. He doesn't make the tackle, but uh, Horn has nowhere to go. He had two blockers in front. Now it's decision time for Bill Callahan. Oh, it's a fourth down and five from the six. The decision has been made. Bill Callahan's team going forward on fourth down and five. 
from the six yard line. Again, Nebraska can get a first down just inside the one yard line. Yeah, not going to be content to kick a field goal here in this situation, not conceding this football game in any fashion. Uh, the Huskers trying to get a score. Four wide receivers set. Straight drop to throw, hit at the line of scrimmage and knocked down. Lynn Magruder, I believe, got a hand on it. So the Sooners will take over on downs. Well, that's tough sledding when you get inside here. Big Lynn Magruder, number 96, going to get in the way again here. He gets a hand up there as Joe Daly tries to throw the ball. Almost intercepted there at the line of scrimmage by Pendleton. But uh, good job that time by the Sooners negating this Nebraska football team from getting into the end zone. Well, Jason White is going to come back out for at least one more possession. And we've got 94 yards to work with here. They take over the six yard line. In the backfield with Adrian Peterson. Hands it to Adrian Peterson. Peterson fights ahead for a couple. Titus Adams making the tackle. And, oh, we got together. Associate so producer Mike DiBaccioni polling a lot of the members of the media this week, and they came up all, from all, all across the country. The all-time Nebraska and Oklahoma offense, and this is the way it looks. And, of course, there's going to be plenty of debate on this, but Tommy Frazier, Mike Rozier, Billy Sims, and Billy Vessels, the 1952 Heisman Trophy winner. They're your running back. Well, just look at the names. I mean, it's, all across the board here, you take a look at these players, and uh, we'll take a look at that again, but a lot of great players from both these programs on the offensive side. And, Okay, the decisions are hard to make as Adrian Peterson trying to get something going here. Spins away and gets what could have very well been a loss of five all the way out to the 12-yard line. Now, I put pen to paper, and the best I can tell is between these two programs, we talked about the 12 national championships, the 81 conference championships, 229 All-Americans to choose from. I tell you, offensive lineman, Remington, Steinkiller. I mean, they're just guys that are names here. And, you know, that's the Nebraska of old. You know, that's the old downhill smash mouth football. Those guys, you know, that's the, the mentality in Nebraska. When you lined up against from a Nebraska team, you know, the past several years, you knew it's going to be a physical football game. And it's going to be smash mouth. And, and that's what I think about when I think about uh, the big end on the side of the hand. You think, you think about Dave Remington. He's I've been good, against Dave a few good, times. And so, uh, he was good enough to have a trophy named after him. So that means you pretty solid at your position and their penalty markers come in as Jawan Rankins was interfered with. It's Kellen Houston that's going to get called for the interference and it's going to be a first down for the Oklahoma Sooners. Hey, take a look at the all-time defense. It's one outland or Lombardi or whatever award winner after another. A lot, lot of awards on here. Well, this is a lot of trophies right here, <laughs> here no go. doubt about it. We talked about trophies tonight, but uh, some of the players on this list, just take a gander at them from the Selmans to the Bosworth and the Gursky Awards. Oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's there. It, it's there. These are all timers. Now, you can have some different uh, different picks, but this is from across the country with, uh, with media and friends and FSN folks. Uh, uh, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good compilation there of a lot of history here between the two football teams. Broderick Thomas, and Brian Bosworth is the linebacker. Edwin out to the 27-yard line. Brian Bosworth was also an All-American, an academic All-American as well. Yeah, one of the smarter guys out there and uh, bright guy. And this guy right here, uh, he's writing his record book and his page. And you know, if he was to win that Heisman Trophy again this year, I mean, there's probably no doubt that he may be, he may go down in the annals of OU football as perhaps the greatest player of all time uh, in Oklahoma with what he's done with the national championship potential this year, the Heisman Trophy a year ago, and has a chance to win that once again. Jason White just keeps adding to his resume. Graduate in December with a degree in sociology, six-year senior. Straight drop to throw out of the gun. He throws it, it's complete. It's J.D. Runnels, and Runnels out near the 40-yard line once again. Ira Cooper 
with the tackle as we go to John Radigan on the sideline. All right, guys, I'm here with the Roughnecks, and uh, all the guys that are standing with me have served, will serve, or are serving military commitments. And check out this flag. This flag took a tour of Iraq, and most of the names on there are OU graduates, OU alums who are now serving our country in Iraq. Sadly, two of the names on there are of soldiers who have since been killed in action in Iraq. Happily, many of the soldiers are watching this game right now in Iraq, and our Roughnecks have a little message for you. God bless you all. Give them hell. Come home safe. And go Sooners! They're your heroes in this stadium. Thank those men for what they do for us. About that, and uh, happy to bring you some college football. To this is a diversion, your, yeah, a little right. diversion over there. Absolutely. And watch that's, Adrian Peterson. That's pretty fun. That's pretty special. Jason White. Uh, this offense here for Oklahoma has been exceptional tonight. And they're a good football team through and through, and very deserving of their ranking so far. And, and a lot of talk about where will Oklahoma end up in the in the national rankings uh, after this weekend. Talked about Georgia and Auburn. Auburn getting the, the win against Georgia this week. And uh, who's going to be ranked uh, the top two football teams? I think clearly a lot of people think that USC is, is the number one football team. But a lot of debate whether Oklahoma's number two or it's going to be Auburn. And uh, I think that the Sooners are making a statement right now that they deserve their ranking right now as the number two football team. And all things probably point for them to go to the Big 12 championship game, they'll, they'll earn a spot if they win this football game and then if they win that on to the national championship. Well, Auburn with the obvious and very impressive win today over Georgia. That's going to impress things but uh, and help things for sure. But Oklahoma impressive tonight as well, albeit Nebraska not on the same level as Georgia. Still a 30 to nothing dominant win tonight, at least right now. Looking for more, and they may get it. Travis Wilson and Wilson. Has the football down at the 30-yard line where he is finally corralled by Daniel Bullocks. Well, I don't think Jason White's really been hit except for the first half of this football game, and that's the credit to that offensive line, the protection that he had. Hey, when a quarterback with his tools and his skill and his, uh, his knowledge of the game can stand back there and kind of look around the yard and find a, an open receiver, it's tough for defenses to cover him, and so that offensive line is doing a great job in protection and allowing the quarterback and receivers to work. From the 30 yard line, first down and 10. White again, phenomenal numbers tonight. He's had four incompletions in 31 attempts. This time he hands it to Adrian Peterson, and Peterson is spun down after a gain of a couple. Brandon Teamer, sophomore from Omaha, made the stop. Uh, first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O. That O would be OU tonight, where they have limited Nebraska to O on the scoreboard. 30 to nothing. Great output here by the Sooners offensively, defensively. Heck of a stand here against this football team. Anytime you shut anyone out in major college football, that's a, that's a big feather in your cap. Great drop to throw again. Open man and just overshot. Jawan Rankins. Well, you, a lot of people talk about uh, Jason White and his arm strength. If you take a look at that pass, that was a zip pass. He was. threw that from like a rope from the hash mark all the way to the five yard line. And player of the game? Yeah, I think the Kyocera player of the game, it's safe to say, would be Jason White tonight. Is Jason White, the numbers on him 369 yards, three touchdown passes tonight. It's Jason White, our Kyocera player of the game. He's two. He's making a strong, strong push for that Heisman Trophy. Tonight's not going to hurt things at all. Here's Rankins. Juwan Rankins trying to get outside. Cuts it back at the 20, has the first down. It is knocked down at the 19-yard line by Barrett Rood. Simple little pass outside, but the wide receivers continue to work. What I mean by work is they just keep blocking. You know, they just kind of bounce off and keep going and change the direction by the receivers. And, Get something there, and Jason White knocking once again. And this is one of those things where, you know, decision time here, it's two minutes to go in this football game. Do the Sooners attempt to score? You bet they do. They're going to try to make a statement here. And I don't think that uh, there's any animosity here between these football teams attempting to score, but I think that uh, the Sooners are firmly with the mindset of put some more points on the board. Adrian Peterson trying to do just that, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 16 yard line. And Barrett Rude once again with the tackle, and Baird Rood really a phenomenal 
middle linebacker and a guy that you know, rewrote the tackling record books at Nebraska. And boy's going to keep on doing that at least for the next couple of games. They have Colorado left, does Nebraska. At the post Thanksgiving game, that's all that Nebraska has left. While Oklahoma, they're at Baylor next week. And on to the Big 12 championship game. Here's Peterson. And Peterson doubled up at the line of scrimmage. Barrett Rude was the first man to get to him. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by People Friendly Document Solutions only from Kyocera. By Dr. Pepper. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. By Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. And by Cialis. Cialis is here. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. So third down time for Jason White and the Oklahoma Sooners. Third down and eight. Under a minute to go in the ball game. White again with time. Looking for an open receiver. Throws against the grain and incomplete. He was trying to find Ford in the back of the end zone. No good coverage that time by the Huskers in the secondary. Nobody open there for Jason White to go to. And fans here saying go, go, go. I think that Bob Stoops is uh, pulling in the reins here. Probably going to attempt this here on maybe a fourth down. But with people seeing the Auburn Georgia score, I don't think you can. Yeah, you know there really is part of it now that a lot of people think about. You know the scoring doesn't come into play, and you know your margin of victory. But you know in the eyes of voters and people that really haven't watched this football game, they might just see the score. That extra touchdown, a 37 to nothing uh, score versus a 30 to nothing score. Believe right, 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 right. not, that has some merit in some people's eyes. The Nebraska is going to call a timeout. A timeout of the field. We will take it with them. The Oklahoma Sooners with 40 seconds to go in the game. They lead 30 to nothing. Well, 30 to nothing, and Oklahoma looking for more as they face a fourth down, and they're going to go ahead and go for it. Well, Kevin, they can get a first down or a touchdown. No doubt about it. Either one here. Jason White in the shotgun. White straight drop to throw out of the gun throws it underneath it's complete and it's going to be short of the first down so Nebraska will take over on downs as Ford made the catch but it'll be short of the first down and with 33 seconds left Nebraska will get the ball back yeah but a good offensive performance here by Jason White and his football team and just some tremendous numbers here for Jason White and He's our player of the game, no doubt about it. The young man has done everything uh, in this football game that he needed to for his football team to, to get a W and a convincing W. And Bob Stoops congratulating his troops for coming off the field and that offensive effort tonight. The defense, chance to have a shutout here, just 33 seconds to go in this football game. And people looked at the defense and saw that they gave up big points the last couple of weeks. And if you really look a little closer, special teams gave up 14 points in each of the last two games. Now they're making the announcement here in the stadium because folks are throwing oranges out onto the field. On a night like tonight, while it's not quite freezing, it's close. And that's something you want to have no part of. They're <laughs> going to get a penalty. Coach Stoops is out there on the field and trying to do a little traffic control here, keep those oranges off the field. Well, if one man in one city could get 84,000 people to do one thing, it would be that, that's the man that I think you want giving the signals. What a night for Jason White. 29 of 35, 383 yards, three touchdowns. And Nebraska from the 28-yard line. Old Daly hands it right up the middle and room to run. They chase him down the sideline all the way down as Steve Crewall making the play and Rodney Poole, the free safety, finally made the tackle. But Crewall, the man who played eight-man football, getting it done. Look at this. Well, I tell you, for a, for a great a football game as Oklahoma has played to be <laughs> blacks a days ago on one play here at the end of a game, and Steve Crewall just doesn't have enough gas to get into the end zone. 
the seventh man in the last 35 years to earn a scholarship at Nebraska after playing eight-man football in the state of Nebraska on the high school level. And they hand it to Crewell again. He had a touchdown reception last week against Iowa State. Takes it down to the 20-yard line on what should be the final play of this ball game. Instead, Nebraska going to throw it down. They're going to try to spike the football. Takes a couple shots at the end zone. They've got two seconds left, or at least take a shot at the end zone. And the fans here, you know, if you're going to have it one way, you're going to get it back the other. You can't blame Nebraska at this point. Well, they're trying the field goal team out there on the field go. now, and they're going to try to put points on the board. And Bill Callahan says, hey, I'm going to put points on our team. You know, try to score down there. We're going to put points on the board and not give you that uh, the goose egg up there. So look at the Angeles board nine on the year. And... He is good on the final play of the game. David Dykes with the field goal in the final play, and they avoid the shutout. But Oklahoma making a statement. They win it by a score of 30 to three as Bob Stoops, coaching in his 50th game in the Big 12, now runs his record to 42 and eight. Another page written in this great old rivalry again. Last eight times these two schools have gotten together, at least one of the teams in the top five. Tonight, obviously, Oklahoma, the number two team coming up big. And let's go down onto the field to John Radigan and Bob Stoops. All right, Kevin, thanks much. Yeah, Coach, a couple of goals accomplished here. I know one of them is that you win the South and now qualify for the Big 12 championship game, and that feels good, doesn't that, it? That is. That's, uh, we needed to do that. That's, uh, you know, one of our primary and first goals, and uh, we need to do it. And I know talking to you and the coordinators during the week, you wanted to have a game where you played all four quarters well and you dominated a team. You've got to feel like you did that tonight. Well, for the most part, yes. There's still some things we can do a little better, but... Uh, yeah, it was a, it's a good, well, uh, you know, a good game, and uh, you know, feel like we're getting somewhere, definitely, and improving as we're as we're going here at the end of the year. That's great, coach. All Thanks right. very much. Congratulations. 32-3 is the final on the last play of the game. Kevin, back up to you. Uh, Bob Stoops told us this week what he likes is that his team is yet to peak. Well, right now they are headed to the third straight Big 12 Conference Championship game. Next up, we will send you to the studio in Los Angeles with Mike, Kellen, and Billy Ray. They'll get you caught up on all the football action from around the country today. Then it's the number one USC Trojans playing host to Pac-10 rival Arizona right here on FSN.